Hello. Um, I'm there on my own in in Bletchley. Um, Sean's asked me that. Well, I'm home for a, a while, a few days, a week or so, and Sean's asked me to do a solo vlog um, while I'm away. Um, so the, here it begins. This, uh, I came here yesterday, so I've come home to look after my mum because she's she's um, she's having some surgery done. It's all fine, but I'm going I'm to be here looking after my mum for a few days. Um, first port of call today was like my free day, so I went out to took advantage of being able to go out. Um, was to walk into Bletchley. Um, so I used my Google Maps for that, and it sort of took me on a weird route. Um, along some roadsides with, with no like pavement, um, past uh, a waste dump place which stunk, across a field, and then I got into Bletchley High Street, which is my which was my target because I saw there was a second-hand record shop in, um, in like an indoor market there. Um, what was it called? The, the guy in there was delightful. He sells second-hand junk, books, DVDs, records, sort of priced willy-nilly or not priced, um, and I, I got some treats, uh, so um, I'll show you those in a minute, what am I reading, so my, my aim was to finish this before I left actually, but um, I still haven't finished it and this is day two here, so I'm currently reading uh, Due to a Death, this is one of the British Library crime classics, it's by Mary Kelly. And it's from 1962, and I'm I'm really enjoying it. I've, I've got a sense that maybe the ending isn't going to be massively satisfying as I approach it because I haven't got much there. But I mean, certainly, like most of it so far has been wonderful. Like I could probably see how most people would find it really boring because there hasn't really been any crime yet, <laughs> and we're this far in. Um, uh, but I'm loving the sort of es estuary setting of it. It's like in a small, kind of quite run-down um, English town. And um, there's lots of salt marshes. Um, and it's just very sort of dour, rainy, you know, like estuary stuff, which I'm, I'm really enjoying. But, I mean, I'll let you know how it ends. But obviously we're in August now, so I, I did um, bring a couple of things for Garb August with me. So I'll show you those. I mean, because it's week one, I don't know if I'll do the weeks, like um, the themes of the weeks, but because it's week one, um, I think it was um, like men's adventure and like a category romance. So I did bring uh, a category romance with me. I brought The Girl in Studio B by Teresa Holloway, sort of set on a TV um, set setting like a TV show. Um, this is one of the ones we found in Tesco's, so that looks great. I love the col the colours on this. It's a Valentine book. Also brought with me um, Free into Two Won't Go. So just really keen to read um, about a threesome. Um, and I brought a bunch of other books with me as well, just you know backup because you need backup, don't you? Um, but today in in the uh, second hand market. Um, I found a couple of gems, I think. Um, so I found the novelisation of Basic Instinct. Hardback. In very clean condition. Um, it's a novel by Richard Osborne, based on the film written by Joe Esterhaz. So, I mean, a classic film. Uh, <laughs> I feel, you know, I feel like August is the month to read this in. Uh, yeah, I was quite keen to sort of find a novelisation, so I think I found the best novelisation I could have found. And then um, I found a Harold Robbins book. Like I said, just look at this cover. Isn't that terrifying? It's um, Dreams Die First. It's so good. Uh, it's the late 70s. It's got one of those great, as we were discussing recently, big author picks on the back of books. They need to come back. Um, it's about a sort of a young, sexy, handsome guy who takes over a magazine called Macho. And, you know, it becomes a big shocking uh, moneymaker. Um, but because he saw... The, the guy there was, was quite charming. Because he saw that I bought this, he was saying, Oh, I'm reading Harold Robbins right now. 
he was reading the Piranhas. He said, do you want that? And I said, well, not if you're reading it, because, you know, you don't do that. And he said, oh, sorry, it's the 30th time I've read it. <laughs> so he was a big, he's a big fan. Um, he's just reading this all the time, probably. Um, so he let me have it, the Piranhas. I don't, don't know what this one's about. It looks a bit more 80s, because that's the author photo on this one. But I've found some records as well. I'll, maybe I'll save those to to do a little haul at some point in the vlog. But um, my plan now is to have a nap. Because it's been pretty full on. Walking. Having conversations with people. Um, so I take advantage of a bit of a quiet house. And uh, I'm planning on napping every day while I'm here. So I finished due to a death. Um, I don't know, I mean, it sort of dragged a little bit towards the end and it kind of felt a bit... Uh, more of its time, I guess. It was a bit melodramatic. Almost like it didn't really need the mystery element to it. But I still enjoyed it. I'm going to give it four stars, despite everything. Um, because, yeah, I like... I'm kind of interested in that sort of 60s era of British crime, because it's kind of that... It's like not quite that the golden age, Agatha Christie sort of stuff, and it's not quite the sort of more gritty, violent 70s, post 70s stuff. It's that sort of in between the two. Um, I found it really interesting. So, yeah, I mean, not. I'm not going to recommend it to anyone because I don't know who'd enjoy it, really, but I enjoyed it. Um, she's a good writer, you know, and it had lots of, you know, it, it felt quite dated and lots of, there's lots of discussions of, you know, men are like this, women are like this, men and women. Yeah, that's done. I'm not sure what I'm going to read next. I'll keep you posted. I had a uh, a little nap, which was nice. My mum's been giving me um, various kind of vitamins and ointments. <laughs> so I'm going to try this one next. Um, vitamin B complex sublingual liquid energy. You sort of put it under your tongue. Um, it's vegan. It sort of says it's um, sort of citrusy. Food supplement with sweetener. Mm, it's quite tasty. It tastes like medicine. It tastes like um, you know that red medicine that you used to have as a kid. Not unpleasant, but like a cough medicine. Did you get him? started reading um, Ray Bradbury's kind of advice to readers book, Zen in the Art of Writing, Essays on Creativity. And it's only a really kind of short book and actually really short chapter, so it's just sort of essays collected, I think, throughout his career on writing, um, which I think are really useful. Um, and I saw, if I can find it, I'll link it below, like a, a really good talk he gave um, at a university on writing, short stories. Um, before and a lot of what he said in that is kind of in this as well um, and I love Ray Bradbury I do feel this is a little bit old school in lots of ways because I mean when he mentions all the writers and artists and musicians that he loves he doesn't mention one woman 
Um, and he does use terms like the muse and stuff like that, which I think, I mean, he sort of refers to the muse as the subconscious, you know, for a writer. Um, so it's a, diff it's a different take, I guess, on the idea of the muse, but I don't know if like the muse is something that has much of a place anymore um, as a term. But really like amusing and cute and um, really helpful advice um, for out. A lot of it's just about making lists of words that really appeal to you. This is how he um, wrote a lot of his short stories, was he just wrote loads of titles of things that he liked, and then he'd have to write the story. Um, yeah, and the other book I'm reading, The uh, Girl in Studio B, is I'm kind of hooked. Um, so it's like it, I read it as a category romance for the uh, Garb August um, week one thing. Well, I haven't finished reading it, but I'm reading it for that. And um, it actually turns out there's like a murder in there, like a murder mystery going on as well, which I wasn't expecting. I really like the whole um, TV studio sort of setting. It's kind of like a news news studio or something like that. Mary is like, in, like a chat show host, I guess, like an interviewer. And there's a new newsreader who's like super hot. Uh, I can't remember what his name is. He wears glasses and he's got green eyes. So, but yeah, I'm just doing nurse duties really here. So I'm not really getting to go out or do very much at, at the moment. Um, other than on the first day when my mum went to surgery. So I've been cooking and cleaning and applying eye drops. Um, I went to see the ducks yesterday. That was really nice. Read some Ray Bradbury with the ducks. Um, I keep getting like, spots <laughs> being here. I don't know if that's <laughs> stress or I think like the water's different. So like, do you do have that when you like you travel somewhere and the water's different? So my skin feels different. Oh, yeah, it was a really nice bacon bacon sandwich I just had. So keep it posted. <laughs> So I've taken advantage of mum having a colour printer and I've made <laughs> really shoddy because uh, it, it's got the bit that there. Um, so I'm, this is this will be my this will be my zine, but it's so nice to finally have it. Um, but I've printed another one off, so I'll make one for Sean. Hopefully this will. I think the problem is that the um, yeah, look the uh, the middle bit doesn't line up. So that's all right though. And then it cuts off some bits here. I did the best that I could. I, I printed it to fit, but um, maybe when I put the bit of paper in the other way around, it, I don't know. Who knows? We'll see. But, I mean, it still still functions. It still functions as a zine. Um, thank you, Heather. This is wonderful. I even did Heather's um, uh, stapler technique, which worked a treat. So yeah, make one for Sean, and then we're both set to go. Hello. I haven't done a whole heap of reading. 
um, it's Saturday now uh, so I'm gonna go home tomorrow so this is my last full day here um, but I did manage to go out snuck out a little bit yesterday got the bus into the centre and I found another little record store which is actually great I think they're moving somewhere else quite soon but um, off the record in Milton Keynes just like you know mostly secondhand sort of stuff um, so I thought I'd do a little vinyl haul that be all right with you? I've gone a little bit overboard, but everything was quite cheap. So from um, off the record, I got... <laughs> I forgot I got this. This is like two pounds. Dean Martin, Houston. So I know this album. Um, it's got a little lovely one, which is really catchy. I like that one. Um, it's got some really good songs, like um, Old Yellow Line on there. Um, Down Home. And it's, you know, nice little condition there for two quid. Also in the sale rack. This is a good find. John Stewart. So I've got a couple of John Stewart records already. Um, this is California Bloodlines. This is uh, sort of a late 60s one. It's got a country, but like more sort of outlaw sort of country, sort of Chris Christopherson sort of sound. But uh, yeah, this is, this is a really good album. So that was a bargain. Lovely picture of John on the back there. And this was like such a good find. So I did pay a little bit more for this. I think I paid like six, seven pounds for this. David Ackles. Um, no relation to Jensen. Uh, American Gothic. Like you never see this around anywhere in the UK. So I had to get it. I'm a really big fan of, of David Ackles. It's, it's kind of like um, sort of dark, folky. This one's a little bit sort of quirky, sort of 70s, sort of Randy Newman. Um, slash like Mickey Newbury, that kind of thing. It's a great cover and it's like in really good condition. So that was an excellent find. I'm so glad I managed to sneak out and find that yesterday. So those are the ones I got from um, Off the Record. Um, so I remember at the beginning of the vlog, I told you I went to, to Bletchley and I went into the indoor market, I went to Bulldog Music. I found those excellent uh, books, The uh, uh, Basic Instinct and the, the Harold Robbins. Well, do you want to see what records I got? I'm really pleased with these, are so cheap. And actually he gave me one for free because I found it um, in a box of stuff he hadn't quite sort of gone through yet. So he hadn't sorted through it yet. And it's... Clouds by Joni Mitchell, which is just one of my all-time favourite Joni Mitchell albums. Um, so he said, because it had the writing on the cover, he was he wasn't going to sell it for very much anyway. So I think maybe I'll be able to get that off. But who knows? But then he had to, he hadn't played it yet to see if it was any good, and there was like a big scratch across the first two tracks. So he played it, and it was quite sort of jumpy. So um, he just let me have it. So even if the like, first couple of tracks are you know, a bit skippy. It's just a really nice thing to have. Yeah. Great album. It's got one of my all-time favourite songs on, which is I Don't Know Where I Stand, which is like really just takes me back to my early 20s every time I hear it. Um, oh, I love this album. Um, one of my all-time faves, uh, Leslie Duncan. And this is a great album by Leslie Duncan, and just the most beautiful cover. It goes browns and oranges. and uh, So, yeah, Everything Changes. So this is um, from 1974. It's a little bit dinked up, but that's alright, because you never see Leslie Duncan stuff anywhere. Uh, I love this album. It's got Broken Old Doll on it. Just such a beautiful song. It sort of reminds me of a little bit sort of Nick Drake kind of thing. This is kind of classic 70s, kind of middle of the road singer-songwriter, but I love her. She's great. One of my sort of albums I've been listening to the most this week, kind of I had like, my eye out for this one, because I thought I might find it, because... You find a lot of his stuff in second-hand shops. Um, but this has been uh, something I've been listening to on Spotify for the last couple of weeks. And this is um, Don McLean, Believers. This is like an early 80s album. I don't really know much about Don McLean other than, you know, the whole, like the classics. Um, but I was listening to this the other day, and it's got um, Castles in the Air at the beginning, which I think is like a re-recorded version like I think he did like he'd, he'd already released it and he redid it and I really like the version he did of this um, and it's, it's, a, it's a weird album look at him on the cover there it's a good it's a good album the first half is brilliant and then the second half isn't very good so 
I was, you know, I found it for two pounds. Um, and the nice thing about records is you don't have to listen to the second side. <laughs> Not that it's bad, but the first half is just really high quality, I think. So I don't know. I don't know about Don McLean. Do you? Is he? Is he good? But uh, I really love the first half of this album. Now this is a great find. I was really hoping I'd find this in uh, Cardiff, and I had to look everywhere, and I couldn't find it. So again, I spent a little bit more on this one. I think I spent eight quid on this one. Smokey. And this is Bright Lights and Back Alleys. This is such a brilliant album. So Smokey uh, were one of those bands, I think they're from Yorkshire in the 70s. They're quite sort of popular. They're kind of um, quite sort of radio friendly. Power pop, a bit of a post sort of counterculture sort of sound. This album is their best. This is a brilliant album. It's got I Can't Stay Here Tonight. It's got Sunshine Avenue on it. It's from 1977. Now, Smokey went and ballsed up their whole reputation years later. Because I remember, like, is it the 80s or 90s? They did, like, they re-released one of their songs about Alice. Like, their favourite, the famous song. And they did it with Roy Chubby Brown. Can you say no to a £2 Cheryl Ladd? I can't. So I got Cheryl Ladd's first album of the Charlie's Angels. Um, this is uh, late 70s, kind of easy listening. Good stuff. And the one that I was really interested in, which I, I I haven't heard anything by by this guy, and it's a promotional copy, it says on there. Um, so I don't know like how it ended up in his shop there, but it's from 1968. So I was kind of interested, and um, Tom Gent is his name. Um, and it's, he wrote all the songs on here, so it's not like he's not like one of those people that just do covers. So I was kind of interested by that, singer-songwriter from the late 60s, and then I had a look on sort of the sort of instruments and personnel at the bottom, and it had like a dobro and flute, uh, you know. So it's got like it's got that kind of it should have that nineteen sixty eight sort of sound to it, sort of folky maybe, poetic kind of uh, folky stuff. I'm hoping. Let me know if you know Tom Gint. Yeah, anyway, those are all my records. I got too much stuff. I'm sorry, but it's kind of my holiday, isn't it? So I'm allowed. <laughs> So the partner of, who is, what is Harriet, like sister-in-law? Kind of. Yeah. Sister-in-law-ish. Yeah. Anyway, her partner made me, very kindly, this Biscoff cheesecake, vegan cheesecake. Um, it's delicious. So, um, just about to go get my train home. So I thought I'd better close up this vlog, even though I haven't done much reading. Nearly finished the girl in Studio B. So I'm, I'm quite impressed, you know, it's like a... It's a solid mystery romance, three stars so far. So I'll let you know when I finish that. Finished uh, Due to a Death. Nearly finished Ray Bradbury. That's kind of quite uh, made me want to write more, which is good. Which is what it's supposed to do. Um, but I haven't really sort of touched any of the other books. It's a shame, so I wanted to get to um, Basic Instinct. So maybe that'll be first port of call when I get back to Cardiff. Um, but yeah, thank you for keeping me company at home. Um, sorry this vlog is a little bit all over the place, but I'll try and upload it now and hopefully it'll be up later today. Um, see you soon. <laughs>